when predicting what seem like 50-50 fights on paper or when having difficulty predicting a fight, at least initially, because as some of you already know, I made up my mind already on who I'm picking. But I did have to go through the process you're about to witness here. So let me show you what that entails. And when doing that sometimes, before I make up my mind, because the fight is difficult to predict, if only initially, I will listen to what people have to say. More often than not, famous people or people who are supposed to know a thing or two about boxing, people that other people like to listen to as I take a sip of my coffee. Good morning, everybody. And I ask myself, are they telling the truth? And I like to listen to people who have a different opinion on the fight or leaning a different way. Because I was always leaning. Well, not always. But 51% of the time I was leaning toward Beterbiev over the years. So I listened to the opposition and, well, ask myself, are they telling the truth, right? Because if their conclusion is based in bullshit, then it's likely that their conclusion is bullshit. What, what's the, the the breakdown, the the synopsis from Roy in that fight, man? Because a lot of people are going back and forth. They don't know who to pick. Better be if he's a great puncher, but he's been down a few times. I don't think Baterbiev is a one-punch guy. Not to say that you haven't seen him lend a punch and a guy go down and not get up, but generally a lot of other punches led up to that or the guy felt the power and, you know, kind of decided not to get up. And I think concentrating too much on his power, giving him too much credit for his power you may be overlooking some of the other things that he is good at. Now, when I watch him fight, to me, Beterbiev looks like he has very heavy hands, hard bones. And his power, not always, a lot of the times is straight and direct. It's like, it's like taking a baseball bat and not swinging it at someone, but jabbing them in the face with it. It's not going to necessarily knock you out, but it'll scramble you. It'll hurt. It, it's His punches just look painful to me. They don't look like so much skull rattling as the, the, the pain just stays with you. And he will throw in volume and just keep you hurt and keep hurting you. And sometimes he does hit very hard, don't get me wrong, but it's not that kind of one-hit-a-quitter type power. And again, overlooking that, you might mistake him for a different type of knockout artist. What does that tell me? In my humble opinion, if you've been down two or three times already, being the puncher that you are, I mean, either when you're punching, you leave yourself in a bad position and people are catching you, or you don't take as good a punch as you throw. Okay, so this analysis is flawed because all you got to do is look at the film. He's analyzing this as if he had never seen the fight and just heard rumors or read an article about what had happened without seeing all the details. Well, what happened? Was he off balance or, does, or is he chinny? What clues do we have? I mean... You could be a big puncher and just get caught punching without having made any mistakes. The other guy's just faster and maybe a huge puncher himself. We don't need to, or we could eliminate a lot of the possibilities, like maybe the either or that Roy is seemingly struggling with here. And we could just look at the film and, and say, what happened? Callum Johnson, in my opinion, legitimately hurt him, but there'd be a dropped his hands as he was punching, if I remember correctly, and he got hurt, legitimately hurt. Um, Jeff Page knocked him off balance, but that was a little gung-ho, my opinion, didn't respect his opponent much, and got knocked down off balance, and, well, 
destroyed both guys. Let, let's not miss that important detail. Both would be a mistake fighting b because he stays. Fun. Another thing, well, if he's chinny, then we should have evidence of this, right? Or if he doesn't take a great punch, you should have more evidence of this. We've seen Beterbiev get hit by big punches, and I would say I've seen Bivo more hurt than Beterbiev. And the reason why I say that is because, well, they both fought Joe Smith, and Beterbiev looked a little bit rattled maybe, but Bivo was hurt multiple times in that fight. Bivo has an excellent poker face, but I mean... If I had to bet on it, I'd say Beterbiev takes a better punch. He's just, he just looks, he comports himself, he fights like uh, the harder guy, right? He doesn't fight like a Chinny. And I'm not saying Bibo is Chinny, but if anybody fights, if we may want to question anyone's chin, it's the guy that's very, that's a lot more defensive, maybe. Fundamentally sound with his feet, he stays fundamentally sound with his hands. He's a very disciplined fighter. He's always going to be in shape and he's always going to be Demetri Bipol. So if you do anything out of the ordinary, such as... So this just assumes, again, all you got to do is look at the film, that Bivol doesn't have off nights or poor performances. He's had quite a few of those against guys that weren't that good. But Derbyev, I mean, 100% KO ratio. Yeah, he slipped up here and there many, many years ago. But he's been a lot more consistent. I mean, if anyone's consistent in the sport, it's Beterbiev. Against a high level of opposition. So, I, I, you know, it's, it's, this already smells like bullshit. Don't too hard to get yourself off balance. Boy, don't take a punch. As well as you throw a punch, you're going to lose to B-ball. So this assumes that Beterbiev doesn't adjust. He's just going to keep making the same mistake over and over. Or Bivo's just going to, the first time he makes a mistake, or maybe the second, before he can adjust, Bivo's just going to knock him out. Huh? Why would you assume that? Huh. <sighs> Now, Roy is right, but Terbiev does have a tendency to kind of leave his feet behind, get a little bit off balance as he leaps in. He'll leap in with a sort of jab with his feet behind him and his chin in front, shuffle his feet or switch stances, plant himself, and then throw with power. He leaps in with the right hand sometimes and, and the left hook too. So there's opportunities. His footwork isn't perfect. It's just better than Bivol's. Technically, it's not flashy. It's a lot more economical. It's harder to see what he's doing because he's not just... It's not ostentatious. But, I mean, and Bivo has very good balance, but he also gets off balance sometimes, especially when he starts to rattle off combinations or he's in there with someone better than fucking Canelo. And he, he gets so much credit for that Canelo. And even if I suspend this belief, for which no one can provide any evidence, that that was a real fight, well, Canelo is a middleweight at best. He looks smaller than Triple G. At 168, he looked like a fucking midget against all these guys. At 175, he ain't shit. If you can go out there and smash people early or give him to an exchange early and knock him out, that's not out of the picture because we're talking about a guy with a 100% knockout ratio. You understand me? So anything can happen. Me, however, I feel like... As of late, especially, and throughout his career... But Terbiev has shown the ability to put a guy on the ropes in the first round consistently and throughout the whole fight. That's not to say that that's going to be as easy to do against Bivol, but I mean, 
He's shown shown you that he can do that. And it's not the first time that he puts a guy on the rope that the guy ropes that the guy goes. Right? It's consistency. He doesn't just get lucky. He's consistent. He breaks you down. It, it he's not it could happen, I suppose. I think Bevo is too good of a fighter and the Terbiv doesn't hit that hard to just go down in the first or second round. It's going to take some breaking down. And the reason why Baterbi is so good at breaking guys down is because he solves problems, he's consistent, and he builds off his success. It's not like you see... What, what fight do you see Baterbi have early success and then get outboxed and, and not build on his success? It's usually, if you have success against him, it's early... And then you get broken down and stopped. And even when you're having success against him early, it's still tooth and nail, 50-50, even type of fight. And then he takes over. Right? He doesn't just like, I mean, if you're shit, yeah, he'll knock you out quick. Because he tries to put the hurt on you early. And if he sees something, he'll capitalize on it. But if you're class, you're good, then it takes time. He's consistent, he's persistent, he adjusts, he learns, he doesn't, <laughs> his, he builds off his success and he gets better as the fight goes on. In town clubs, nobody wants to truly be hit by a decent puncher. And this goes back to overrating his power and overlooking how he goes about his KO artistry. Right? Even if he punched hard enough, to keep Canelo in check, right? Canelo has been one of the pound for pound best for. Canelo's been was putting Bevo on the ropes a lot. Again, I I don't use that fight, but I mean, if you're going to fucking watch the fucking fight, Canelo had Bevo on the ropes many many times. He wasn't scared of the power. He was doing the, the same shit he always does when guys throw punches at him. Defense. That's what he does when you throw combinations at Canelo, no matter how hard you hit. He always does the same thing. He plays defense. And Canelo is a fucking middleweight at best. Who gives a shit how good you think Bebo's power looked in that fight? Who gives a shit? For a long time now. Right? So what made me think that Bebo does not punch hard enough to either catch Often when he's either off balance or just catch him, period, and hurt him as well. So in a sense, it's like, it's a you pick him, but it's who hits who first. Who get oh, what the fuck? This guy's acting like it's a heavyweight battle between two glass cannons. He will stand who's punch. If Beaver all can take Arthur's punch, Arthur gonna have problems. If Arthur can take B ball's punch, B ball gonna work for a long time. But if B ball hmm. So he's making it sound like if Bebo can somehow take Paterbiev's punches, there's not much that Beterbiev could fall back on. But if Beterbiev can take Bevo's punch, Arthur is going to have problems. So Bevo will still outwork him, and Beterbiev is going to be in the pickle. You're once again overrating his power, not giving him enough credit for boxing ability. Uh, you're acting like Bevo is the better technician, and your underlying assumptions are well flawed. These are this isn't a 50-50 proposition. It's a lot more likely that Beterbi is going to be able to take Bevel's punch, 50 KO, 50% KO ratio, than Bevel is going to be able to take Arthur's 100% KO ratio punch. So this isn't an even money proposition to begin with. 
And, well, just look at the Joe Smith fight and who got hurt and how much and who had problems. Can't take off his punch. That 100% knockout ratio going to stay. Me, personally, I think Meatball's feet are going to be the key. I think his feet are going to keep him out of the wrong exchanges with Arthur. And I think his feet are also going to be what make Arthur pay when Arthur misses with big shots. I I agree. Like, this is going to happen. The question is, will it be enough? Will it happen consistently and often enough? And will Bevo not take much punishment in return? Because just as I look at did look at the CompuBox stats at a certain level, when they fight at a high level, the Terbiev's CompuBox stats are, are better. Because I know you're like a boxing historian, Roy. Like historically, does it usually go the side of the guy that has the quicker feet, the better feet, uh, the quicker hands when they go against a power puncher like that? Sugar Ray Lennon, Tamara. Just, just pick the fight that suits your prediction, your conclusion, right? Except that was a very controversial fight. And these two guys fight nothing like the two guys in question. I mean, there's, there's some similarities there, don't get me wrong. But I mean, Bevo is not on the level of a Sugar Ray Lander, technically, athletically, skill-wise. And Baterbiev is a lot better than Tommy Hearns. What Hearns had is like true one hit a quitter. And he was tall with huge range for the division. It's just. <laughs> these are completely different fights. Okay, so one guy likes to use his feet, I guess, a lot. And what? Hearns just stood there like a fucking statue? Being tall, rangy. He didn't have to use his feet as much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and you could find all these examples of pressure fighters, if you want to call them that, knocking out all the fleet-footed dudes. Now just look at Golovkin's career, right? Beating them, getting to them, if not knocking them all out. So it's, okay, this was supposed to be a historical analysis if possible, right? And Roy just gives you one fight that doesn't even make sense. Okay. <laughs> it was close. It was close. <laughs> that first one. Right? But he, he ended up winning. Right? He, yeah. Do okay. <laughs> okay. you think it's very, very similar style wise to that? Not like that. It's different yeah. because these guys from the Eastern Bloc are different than what we all are known. Then why bring it up? Inside the world, so. Style wise, a little bit different because they both are very good technicians. They both understand and know the game backwards and forth. Um, they both are very good at what they do. So it's a little bit different. These guys are not as swaggy as they should really love it. Okay, so it sounds like up until this point, it's a 50 50 fight, except one guy has a 50 KO ratio and the other guy has a 100 KO ratio. Well, gee, Roy, who do you think wins that? Than the Tamer Hearns were, but they're a lot more disciplined in their skill than Sugar Ray Leonard and Tamer Hearns were. So it's a different type of, of a chess match. Mm, I, I wonder if. So if Baterbiev is disciplined in his skill, then maybe he won't be making all these mistakes consistently enough for Bevo to take advantage of him. Bevo's going to find himself in a you're blowing it, son moment. Uh, he won't find himself in that moment because yeah, I don't if you're think blowing so. it, if you were blowing it, it's going to be blowed already with, with, with Arthur. <laughs> you don't get a chance to be blowing it. <laughs> okay. So, Bevo has to be perfect, right? But, but Terbiev, he, he's really equalizing the, the two in his mind where you really shouldn't be doing that. It's not... It's not fair to do that, right? So I agree with this. Bevo has to be perfect. He can't. He has to win just about every exchange. 
and minimize how much he gets hit. He has to minimize, uh, limit the encounters. And all, all, most, most of the encounters have to be on his terms. And he has to limit how much, how exciting the fight is, basically. This is what Roy says. He has to be perfect. But then he turns around and <clears throat> assumes that either Baterbiev cannot adjust, even though he's very disciplined and very good technically, just as good as Bevo, apparently. But he's making it seem like both of them can afford to make just as many mistakes or can't afford to make as many mistakes. Completely ignoring the fact that one guy has a 50% KO ratio and the other guy has a 100% KO ratio. <laughs> it was hit you and you sleep. So if you blow on it, it's going to be blown by the time they get to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but- Even though Roy Jones Jr. is p- picking Bevo, if you adjust some of his premises, because in my opinion, they are incorrect. It really sounds like he's picking Baterbiev, or he should be saying that, right? Hope that makes sense. Let's see what Teddy Atlas has to say. Now, full disclosure, Teddy, as he likes to say, right? He trained Gvozdik to beat Baterbiev, so, you know, you know. Back in the day when the promoters used to come up with the titles for the promotion for the poster, the tag that they would put on it. For this one, it's been used before, but it fits perfectly. And when I say it, I know it's going to go contrary to what Chris just touched on. And Chris is right. The, his skills are underrated. But this would be will versus skill. That's how most people would see this. Will versus the will of better be of the monster better be of versus the skill, the, the, the surgeon, the scientist. The guy who takes you apart piece by piece of Bevo. So, but. <sighs> Bevo is a soul taker. He takes people's hearts. He does. He's that kind of guy. Is he? Will versus skill. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, sounds good on the poster. Sells the fight to casuals it gives you a certain paradigm allows you to harken back to some other fights that may have been dubbed that and turn out to be very good it's a cliche used to sell fights right are we promoting or are we predicting and if we're gonna be accurate about it yeah better be if it has more than just power more than just relentless uh, aggression yeah, he is skilled. He's technically really solid. He gets into position. So, cool title, but really just bullshit. Okay, got it. Position with his feet. He does it behind the jab. You know, he does He does little things. He moves off to the side every once in a while. Little things that are subtle that you sometimes don't give him credit for. Because at the end of the day, he wrecks the house. You know, he knocks the, he knocks the building down. And that's all. At the end, you see the rubble, and you're saying, okay, this guy the wrecking ball. And that's all you walk away with. But there obviously is more to it than that. Here's the thing for me, handicapping it. I, you could stay here all day about, you know, control and distance. Bevo has the edge on the outside, the jab, you know, accurate punching, you know, boxing ability. He can fight with you. He can also set tra- He's barely taller and he has barely shorter arms, Bebo. What what outside does he have? The, the, what's the edge? Perhaps he can use his legs. He's more dimensional than Better Beef. All that. Ooh. Bebo has more dimensions than Better Beef? He doesn't fight on the inside, for starters. He doesn't do dirty boxing he and obviously but that if does right what are these dimensions that he has that but doesn't possess i think it's more the other way around 
the reason why Bevo hasn't sold very well is because he's sometimes boring because he just does the same thing over and over. And it's repetitive, it's robotic, and he, he just doesn't switch it up. He doesn't have plan B. He just has first gear, second gear, third gear, and maybe fourth. It's just more of the, more or less of the same thing. Now, I'm simplifying a little bit, but where are these dimensions? But Terbiev is the guy with more dimensions, the guy that has more layers to him. I think that's pretty clear to see. That better be has got to go to the body, take the wheels away. Look at the Joe Smith fight, right? Both of them came forward in that fight, and both of them backed away. But then we've knocked the guy down going back. You ever see Bevo do some shit like that? At, at a certain level? Well, no. Like letting a guy in. He can't do that. That's That's the pendulum step. That's what it's about. I get it. But, I mean, it's just not, it's just not as good at it. Right? Bevo gets all this credit for his feet. And yeah, for sure, he deserves it. And how he's able to use the entire ring to win the fight. Yeah, but Baterbi is better at that. But because his first suit, the Destroyer, Come Forward Destroyer, works, I don't know, 80% of the time, he doesn't really have to fall back on plan B. And it could be that plan B is is actually more destructive and he's better at it. He's more successful at it. The little glimpses of Petrbiv that we got back in a way, I mean, he was crazy effective. And maybe a lot of that is element of surprise. People, people think that, oh, I, I could just back him up and then I take him out of his game plan because all he could do is come forward. Maybe in some way... That's what they're thinking. So, okay, maybe the element of surprise makes it so much more destructive and it makes it look better, but so what? It is what it is. But it could be, right? We just don't know. It could be that his back foot game is actually a lot more destructive and a, a lot better than his front foot game. It's just that he never had to rely on it so much to really show it to us. That his, it could be actually, right? That his weaker suit just has been so effective. That's, that's what he's mostly relied on. And I don't even want to say his weaker suit because <clears throat> going back and countering is generally going to be from the outside, maybe stepping back into mid range. But while he's coming forward, he also fights you on the inside. And once he gets close to Bebo, has him on the ropes or, or has him at the right the distance where his short, direct, baseball, bat-type jab punches, stabbing punches also, right, are so effective and so destructive, what's Bebo going to do? Well, he has to hold, right? He has to clinch and spin out of there. I don't think anyone's telling people to fight him on the inside. Well, Teddy is, right? He's got more, he's more dimensional. Right, Teddy? But at the end of the day, the most important thing to me is that maybe for the first time in Better Be of his career, he has a guy in front of him that not only has the skills to beat him, because there's been guys behind in front of him before that had the skills to beat him on paper, but fight John Ford on paper. It didn't work out that way because they didn't have the will. To oh, Teddy's still salty about Voicek getting the fight beaten out of him and 
quitting, but I mean, quitting after taking so much punishment. He's questioning the guy's will, and that's fair enough. But I mean, what gives you this idea that people could go through this? The, t- the same type of shit that Gvozdik went through. What? Gvozdik got rocked and hurt by Adonis in Canada more than once in that fight. A fight that was very difficult. And she fucking went after him and put him in a coma. Adonis Stevenson was no chump. Who who has Bevo beaten, gone through similar adversity against? So, maybe, once again, we're overrating Baterbiev's one punch power and not taking into account just how hurtful these punches are and how they take the fight out of you after he will have hit you, you know, with 200 of them. Maybe your body just shuts down. At the end of the day, I, I think it's mental. But it's, it's you quit because you're aching everywhere. You're dizzy. You're seeing double. You're bleeding. You know, you have a couple of teeth loose. I mean, you have three ribs broken. Your legs can't move anymore. It looks to me, it sounds to me like he's dissing Gvozdik. Like, not appreciating the fact that Gvozdik was a warrior and just got the fight beaten out of him. You could call that a quit. You could call that a... I'm not saying that there aren't fighters that are mentally tougher than Gvozdik who would have gone taken more punches but I mean didn't Gvozdik go longer than anybody else after you know Baterbiev got to that level so I mean gee to deal with that pressure to not get evaporated by that pressure Bevo, I think that's being overlooked a little bit, although Paulie already touched on it, so you guys don't overlook it. But the public might. That Bevo has the will, he has the mental constitution to be able to use his skill in the environment. Bevo has the will? This is what, what? I mean, maybe he does. But this is, this is what we mean when we say, who has he fought, Right. And the answer to that will be, well, just because he hasn't fought anybody or he hasn't been tested as much, that doesn't mean he can't pass these tests. I'm not saying that. I'm just I'm just saying I'm questioning. I'm asking the question, whereas the other side is telling me that he can do these things they've never seen him do. So I could very well be wrong, but you don't have any evidence or your statements, the evidence doesn't exist, and I'm questioning whether he can. And I, it's fair to question, okay? Whereas it's not fair to give him these attributes that he's never shown you to possess. I hope that makes sense. So, you know, and and here's another thing. Just because he hasn't fought a certain level of opposition and hasn't been put through that kind of adversity... It's actually a lot more likely that not having had that experience, he's not going to be able to cope with it as well. Because he's never had to, he's going to be in for a shock. He's going to experience something he's never experienced. Now, again, it may be that it's in him to stand up to that and fight back (laughs) and not get broken down. But at the same time, we've seen better fighters, right? Lineal light heavyweight champion. Not a trinket holder on paper, right? Olympic bronze medalist, not a good regional amateur. You know, we've seen a better guy with more punching power, better wins on his record, better accolades, not be able to stand up to that. So, I mean, the evidence 
is against Bevo here. You can't just give him all these attributes he's never shown you, but it's okay to question whether they're there, and that's evidence for Beterbiev. It's not proof, it's evidence. Damn it. That he's going to have to do, which is basically a house on fire. When you look at the lead up to this, be able to use his skill in the environment that he's going to have to do, which is basically a house on fire. Ollie, if you're going against Better Biev in this fight, are you assuming that at 39, that maybe the wheels physically are falling off in the face of what, what Coach just pointed out? Meniscus injury, yeah, it's definitely a concern and something to think about. But what well, we just don't know, right? How big the injury was, how it's going to affect them, will it at all? It's it's definitely something to consider, right? Just as it's important to consider Beeble's personal situation right now, right? How's that going to affect him? Uh, the the thing with better be if he's you know he can punch with either hand, so I don't think that. To be honest, a guy like Bieber, and I, I wonder if the champs agree with me, but a guy like Bieber with all his amateur pedigree, all that background, the region of the... But there is amateur pedigree as well. At least one level above Bieber's. At least. The world he comes from, as Paulie said, which is 100%. There, there's the same world that Peterbiev comes from, more or less? They're just... They're built different. They're brought up different. You know, they're they're they're, they're just harder people, uh, quite frankly, to a certain degree. Who looks harder to you? Honest question. Who looks harder to you in that ring, in and out of that ring? Who looks harder? And with all of that, and the way he boxes anyway, he he's a guy who has a little caution to him. You know, that's part of his DNA. That's part of his. His style, you know, his makeup, that, that he's not a reckless guy. You know, better be a will not get reckless. He's not thinking he's getting reckless, but, you know, he will roll the dice more. You know, he'll push the envelope more, you know. Maybe because he's harder? Harder to break? Yeah, he'll go to places where there is more risk involved. Bevo is not set up that way. Uh, he's set up to, to box in a, in a fairly careful obviously strategic way maybe because he's not as hard calculated way i guess is the best way to say it all the time so i don't see that changing that much to be honest not 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 in he's been in there with punches before if you had the ability the skill and the toughness to wreck somebody if it was in your dna right would you just be happy outpointing them 50% of the time? And at the highest level, what? 90% of the time? If you had, if that was in your DNA, right? Simple question. You know, uh, Joe Smith was a good puncher. He did catch him. He did hurt him. I think he got a little callous late. He got a little overconfident late. He took for granted a little late. You know, and and. And Smith caught him and hurt him. But even though Smith wasn't really hitting Bevo that much, he tested his stamina, right? Well, Bevo got a little bit tired. His hands started dropping. His feet weren't as quick. He, he did take some punches, right? He got, not to over exaggerate, but he got broken down a little bit. He wasn't the same guy in the 12th, 11th, 10th round that he was in the first. He just wasn't the same guy anymore. So, I mean, he's going to deteriorate, right? Especially against someone like Baterbia, who may not be getting better as the fight wears on necessarily. He might not be, clearly he won't be as fresh, won't have as much stamina as in the first round. But he's always been that much better than his opponents. So relative to his opponents, he has gotten better as they've fallen off a cliff. And we've seen Bevo deteriorate. It's fair to assume he will deteriorate much more against someone like Baterbiev. 
as the fight wears on. And he has to stay perfect for all 12, potentially. But I think that Bevo is going to be what he is. You know, he's always respectful of power. He's respectful because he's a defensive-minded fighter, period. Whether you have power or not, he's the best. If you got no power, he might walk you down a little bit more. Like any fighter who would adjust to his scenery, would adjust to his environment. Uh, any Anyone would smart fighter does that. But I just think that it is in his makeup to be aware of power to be, you know, obviously on his P's and Q's at all times. Anyway, he's going to fight his fight, and that's going to be a strategic, technical fight like a surgeon on the outside, you know, looking not only to take... Nobody's saying Baterbiev has to be perfect, right? Because he's been perfect all the way up until this point. Bivo has to show you something you haven't seen. But Derbyev just has to be but Derbyev. Malik Sanad, that was in June. He got pushed a little in that fight early. Came back, got a knockout after nine decisions in a row. Leading into this fight, Paul, is that an important message to send? As Chris pointed out, not the biggest punch in the world. 10% at the highest level, which isn't even that high. KO ratio. He'll assault you, you know, because uh, he, he puts them together in numbers. So uh. Yeah, basically. Anyway. I don't know what their picks are, but I'm going to say Pauly and Chris are picking Baterbiev. He's the logical choice. But real quick, from just from me now, a synopsis, if you will. Yeah, Bevo has to be, he has to be perfect. He has to, well, essentially Nick rounds. Just my opinion. But win them clear enough. He just has to move his hands more than Baterbiev. And he has to initiate and then stay away and stay off the ropes. And pray to go 12 rounds and get a gift decision. That's my view. Because even if he survives somehow... It, I just, I don't think he has, I think he has enough skill to make it a, to a controversial decision, okay? But he has to stay off them ropes, obviously. He has to be first. He has to be very economical. He can't do these, you know, seven, eight punch combinations that he sometimes likes to throw. Maybe here and there, yeah, if you have a baterbi of, hurt or something yeah okay but he has to be very economical with this power and he's gonna have to run a little bit he has to work off the jab i think something like 70 80 percent of his punches have to be the jab obviously lots of feigning and all this other stuff a lot of posturing pretending, trying to keep Baterbi of guessing and off balance without committing much, frustrating him, making it a slow and ugly fight. When he gets put on the ropes, he has to clinch and push Baterbi of back off balance, right? Or try to spin out of there, but just run into him and push him back. He has to cheat a little bit. What Baterbiev has to do is stay in position to, to punch, which will entail stalking a little bit, but he has to be use a lot more lateral movement than come forward movement. He has to Keep his feet set more than Bevo. Well, like he always does. He has to be more planted, using a lot of lateral movement in order to achieve that. And just get to the spot first, basically. Not be too gung-ho about pursuing Bevo coming forward, but cutting off the ring, holding the center of the ring, 
and in many instances waiting for people to attack him so he could catch them coming in. So he had, has to get to the spot first. And yeah, he has to pressure. He has to cut the ring off and put him on the ropes. He does have to come forward too, behind the jab, obviously. Uh, straight punches from range. I mean, Bevo should... He should be very judicious with his hooks for his part. But yeah, straight punches on the way in. Staying set using a lot more lateral movement than coming forward. And looking to counter punch Bevo, but at the same time getting first, right? So having his feet set, ready to punch, when he sees Bevo jumping around there, and when Bevo sets his feet, that's when he starts punching. As Bevo starts to, you know, he sets his feet and starts to throw the punch, but then Bevo beats him to that punch, but he's reacting to Bevo's punches because it takes Bevo... Bivo might have faster hands, he does, but Beterbiev is quicker because he's more set and his hands aren't slow and his punches are more direct than Bivo's punches. So I think he has to counter punch him while beating him to the punch, basically. And then, you know, when he gets him on the ropes, just, just do what he does. And when Bivo tries to hold or push or headbutt, just fight him dirty, right? Answer. Uh, just engaging. Bivo wants to ha wants to have a dirty boxing confrontation, or he wants to have a wrestling match. <laughs> then rabbit punches, uh, not like blatantly obvious, but you know, Bivo starts to give up the back of his head. And fucking hit him there, right? Not, not your fault. Um, elbows, things. Right? If if a guy starts grabbing a hold of you and coming in, well, just throw a hook but follow through with the elbow like he does right this is this is a huge problem for Bevo he's gonna get put on the ropes and then what if he wants to cheat well <laughs> but Derby is gonna welcome that with open arms how's Bevo gonna deal with the dirty boxer that's a big big problem for Bevo so and you know, but that we have, does have a tendency to rabbit punch sometimes. Sometimes it's what well, the opponent is just falling forward, leaning in, giving up the back of his head. Sometimes he just rabbit punches you, right? So there's another dimension to but that we have that Beevil doesn't have dirty boxing, cheating. So, I mean, yeah, Beevil has to be perfect. And. Well, but Derbyev doesn't. So, I'm probably overlooking something, but, you know, when I listen to some of these pro Bevo predictions, yeah, there's a lot of truth in what a lot of these people are saying, but ultimately, to get them over that hump in a fight that's supposed to be 50-50, right, they got to invent a bunch of shit. And if your conclusion is based on some false premises, the likelihood of that conclusion being correct is, well, that much less. Everybody's talking about how Bevo has to be perfect. I mean, <laughs> but Terbiv is the perfect one. Bevo has never shown you that level of perfection. Bevo has to fight out of his fucking skin. Arthur just has to be himself. Thanks for watching.